Thank you for staying with us. Let's go straight to our political stories now. And we are your election command center. If it has to do with politics, we've got you covered. Policy think tank Imani Africa and the Alliance for Social Equity and Public Accountability, ASEPA, have petitioned the Asante Hene and the Asante Man Traditional Council over the new voters register. The two civil society groups described as worrying the entrenched position taken by the Electoral Commission to compile a new voters register. Justifiably, Asante Man decides that they would also listen to the EC and so then they will see what advice they can offer, which I think is fair. We are not against registration of people to, to vote. I think we've said a time with that number, that they are, the cost claims that the EC makes does not justify the procurement of a new register. We've said that the biometric verification machines have continuously been improved, and to think that they want to spend close to $200 million in procuring new systems simply because they claim that they want to introduce another layer of verification, which is the, I mean, facial recognition, is in itself the least of what the, current, the existing systems can do. In fact, the existing system has far more superior systems of identifying people than just facial recognitions. The procurement processes that led to the purchase of these new equipment themselves were fraught with a lot of irregularities, right? Now, people who believe that, well, maybe the cost issues are, have been over-expressed, and so we need a new register, have also not given us any good ground. The EC has never, for once, suggested that the register is bloated. They've never done that. It's only political actors, some political actors, who are suggesting so. Because the existing systems have been perfected, since 2012 when we bought them, we had error rates of 33%. In 2016 when we used it, it was only 7.5%. In 2019 when we had used them for the referendum and the district level elections, the error rate was 5%, which means that continuously, continuous usage of the system, investment in the system has perfected the system in such a way that it's fairly readable it now knows the identities of people. So the best thing you can do is to use the existing systems. And if you want, just do limited registration, mop up about 1 to 1 1.5 million registrants, and then there you go. Currently, there seems to be a stalemate between the Electoral Commission and the major stakeholders, which is the political parties. And it's creating a lot of tension in the country. Uh, Quite recently, we've seen a number of pronouncements on TV and on radio about violence and what have you. The direction in which our country is going uh, could be a bit you know, problematic for all of us if we don't take steps to address those situations now. And so we felt that it's important that... Uh... All right, so we're staying on this subject matter a while longer. We've been uh, joined by... Um, uh, well, before then, let's speak to, uh, let's go to Skype and speak to uh, Mensa Thompson. He's the executive director of ASEPA. He is uh, one of, uh, he's part of the institute, one of the institutions that have gone to the Otum for to petition him over the new voters register. I'll be putting a few questions to him shortly. Before that, though, the Dankwa Institute, that's DI, has thrown its support behind the Electoral Commission's decision to compile a new register, but wants it to be forthright and decisive in its approach and processes. At a news conference in Accra, the acting executive director, Richard Ahiagba, urged the commission to be guided by the Supreme Court's interpretation that it's mandate to compile, it is its mandate to compile the register and make sure that it is reasonably accurate and credible. All right, so we'll bring you that story shortly. Before that though, let's uh, speak to um, Mensah Thompson. Mr. Thompson, good evening and thank you for joining us. Um, you have gone all the way to the Ashanti region to petition the Otum for to do exactly what? Thank you, Martin. A very good evening to your cherished viewers. Um, we, are, we, we have noticed the current stalemate that is happening between the Electoral Commission and the political parties. We have also seen some level of violent talks and incitement and some sort of political tension that, that is happening in the country. We believe all these tension is not good for our country. Um, we believe that if our country continues to head this way, especially in the build up to a major election like the 2020 elections, then we are going to be in some deep trouble. So it is important that 
we call on the Nananum, who are the custodians of the land, who are, I mean, in fact, the major benefactors of the land, to ensure that they step in much earlier so that um, we can put things under control. Um, basically, what we want to tell the Asantiman Traditional Council is that we want some form of mediation to happen. We want to reach some compromise. If mm. if one party says we want it, one party says we don't want it, what do we do? What? How do we strike a middle ground? What do we do to ensure that at least each party will be satisfied? And going into the elections, we know that nothing of... But, but would you agree with me, Mensa, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Thompson, that uh, scaling it up to the level of bringing in the two for would be uh, coercing him to meddle in politics because there is a, a clearly laid out, you know, order in our constitution that says chiefs should not meddle in politics. Well, unfortunately, there is no provision in our constitution that says chiefs should not mediate between political parties. Uh, if you are talking about active participation in politics, mm -hmm. of course, you cannot be a chief and still engage in active uh, partisan politics. Mm. Uh, but in terms of mediation, I think um, this wouldn't be the first time we're mm -hmm. for uh, is mediating between the two main political parties. We we saw in the build-up to the 2016 elections, we saw the peace pact which the two political parties signed on to under the auspices of Utunfo. And I think that every election year, Utunfo uh, and the Santiman Traditional Council, in one way or the other, have mediated to bring some form of peace to, okay. uh, to the elections. And so uh, it is in the same vein that we yeah. are saying that, no, 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 we believe that it is time for you to activate your mediation progress okay. and to ensure that you play your role as the custodians of the land and ensure that we call a truce in, 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 in this whole debacle that is so what response, to be tension. So what response did you get from the Otum for? Uh, well, Nananum and the Santiman Traditional Council believe that, um, uh, believe in the principle of audio authorial pattern. Uh, they listen to us, uh, they ask questions, which we were able to address extensively and they were satisfied with the responses. Um, fairly, they also want to uh, invite the electoral commission mm. and also give them a listening ear and also give them the opportunity to answer certain specific questions which they are going to be putting out to them themselves. And I believe that it's at that point where they would know which form of mediation right. and uh, which definition of mediation which they would have to go. Thank you so much for making time to speak with us. Um, Mensah Thompson, Executive Director of ASEPA, and they have petitioned the Otum for um, in partnership with uh, Imani Africa. Uh, still an unfolding story, certainly that debate about whether or not uh, we are going to compile a new voters register or there is a need to compile a new voters register still rages on. We have been joined in studio, however, by Richard Ahiagba. He is the um, acting executive director of the Dankwa Institute. They held a press conference today. Uh, it sounded as though they were bashing the electoral commission for not having done what they were supposed to have done years ago, I should say, but then at least the EC is showing signs that it is going to compile a new register. Good evening and thank you for joining us. What exactly was the import of today's press conference? What were you trying to drive home? Well, good evening to you and uh, to your viewers. Um, what we're trying to do is that we see a conversation about a new voter register that is kind of stuck in debate. But uh, we saw that the need to compile a new register is compelling. It's on the basis of law, on the basis of constitutional power and legal power that uh, is available through many of our documents and in simple adherence to rule of law. There shouldn't be any argument about why we compile a new register. Even if it's one day left to go to an election, we need to compile a register because the register we have flies in the face of the law mm. of our country and we shouldn't entertain that or we should countenance it. We you should just do the right thing and fix it. You questioned why, um, you know, in, after the 2012 uh, elections, the Supreme Court ordered the Electoral Commission to make sure that it cleanses the register. Yes. The Electoral Commission undertook that exercise, but you are saying that they, they did didn't. not do it right. They, why, yeah, why so let me, let me just show you this document. This is the the uh, CI-72 registration form A1A. Mm -hmm. Now, this document, what it does is this is what you use to register. And when you register using your passport, 
they're supposed to record your number here. If you use your NHIS, they are, they are supposed to record it. If you use your driver's license, they record it. So if they come to remove you because your form of identification is wrong, in which case when Supreme Court asks to remove NHIA registrant, mm -hmm. you come and you sort for those who use NHIA card. But the form that was used to do the registration under CI-72 didn't provide for that. So the question is, how do you isolate anybody who but uses the, the NHIA card? the Electoral Commission, as a state agency mandated with the powers to put together a register, said that, having gone through their register, they found over 56,000... 772. And the yes, question persons is... persons who had registered with, the, question with, is with, how? with the NHIA card. That, the question is how? Yeah. You, you just don't well, take it. It's like you're questioning how they put the list But I'm showing you the system. document that they took the registration with. Okay. And on that document, it doesn't tell you who used NHIA card to register. So how oh, did wow. you sort it out? And you remember, right. the, then the, 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 the EC's argument in court was that millions of people used it mm -hmm. and therefore were pleading the Supreme Court not to declare the NHIA card invalid because if they did, it will disenfranchise many. Millions. So then, after you said million people have used that card to register, you go to remove, and all you find is 56,772. Now, between you and I, this is not a question of I support or I, did, I don't support. It's a question of right and wrong. Mm. You don't know how to remove it. And the EC admitted on audio that we don't know how to sort those out. But meanwhile, in open court, they lie to the Supreme Court that they know how. But between you and I, basic stuff, the provision here would not allow you to now do if, that. If the, if, so if the Electoral Commission is able to give evidence of how they took out those names, would that... You don't have to ask that question. The thing is, they can't. They don't know it. They have no means of doing it. This mm. is the document. Okay. And the document doesn't give you the and ability the, to do that. So how did you so do it? So in conclusion, you endorse the fact that the Electoral Commission wants to put together... I a do new not register. endorse on the face... Of, of the it, fact that they want a new it register. is illegal that you have anybody on the on the register mm -hmm. who uses NHIS to register, mm -hmm. and we have those people. Okay. So therefore, that register is questionable. And beyond that, just a brief moment. Mm -hmm. Beyond that, the EC and the uh, CI seventy two in instructing its uh, officials to do registration said, "Do not worry to accept or to demand anybody to bring." Uh, proof of uh, uh, proof of qualification as citizens to register just register anybody okay. and beyond that in its uh, instruction manual uh, just one second mm. I, I waited to come here <laughs> in, in its instruction manual in the CI 72 approved by Parliament mm -hmm. if there was no birth certificate in the CI 72 approved by Parliament mm. but the EC added it to each training manual ask its officials to accept it and give people registration because what, what of does, it. What does the, the um, DR intend to do? Clearly, the Electoral Commission says it is going to use two main cards now mm -hmm. to register Ghanaians, which mm -hmm. is the NIA card and then or a passport. Yes. In the absence of both, then you can have two Ghanaians guarantee for you that, you know, you're... Absolutely, you're yeah. So that's, that's clear. That is a, would you post this take on the Electoral Commission for such an anomaly you, you talk about? No, 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 I'm just saying, so right now, the, the issue is not whether or not it's an anomaly. The issue is what is legal, what is accepted. Mm -hmm. What Parliament agrees to use is what you must use. Okay. Don't add, don't take away when Parliament did not take away or did not add. That is the question. So really, the, the register we have now is an unlawful register. Okay. And our basis of that is simple enough for all of us to understand that we cannot rely on that register. In fact... If our commitment is to promote you democracy... Had, you had the Electoral Commission, I mean, the, the two key bodies that are civil society organizations speaking against the compilation of a new register. They've uh, gone to petition those... But they should tell what us their the, basis. What is the basis? I don't see I don't see the basis. In fact, I agree with them. If they're saying the reason they're opposed to it is cost, I say that cost discussions are relevant. But it should not preclude us from doing what is legal, okay. what is constitutional, and what by conscience is the right thing to do. by the Supreme Court. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Richard Ahiagba, Acting Executive Director for the Dankwa Institute. Clearly, this is a debate that uh, uh, we'll see how it pans out in the coming days.